China's space program has reached a point where it can no longer be described as emerging or catching up. What is happening now is something very different. China is accelerating, breaking records, and reshaping the global space race in real time. And its latest achievement may be one of the clearest signals yet that the balance of space power is shifting. In a record-breaking burst of activity, China successfully carried out three Long March rocket launches in less than 19 hours, setting a new national launch cadence record. Those rapid-fire missions also pushed China's total number of orbital launches in 2025 to 83, extending yet another annual milestone. For context, China's previous yearly record was 68 launches, set just last year. This is not incremental growth. This is a sharp jump in operational speed. The launch sequence began on Monday, December 8th at 5.11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. A Long March 6A rocket lifted off from the Taiwan Satellite Launch Center in northern China, placing a new batch of broadband satellites into low Earth orbit. These satellites are part of Guowang, China's national satellite internet mega constellation, often compared directly to SpaceX's Starlink network. Ahead of launch, engineers conducted a dedicated systems review due to extreme winter conditions. Taiwan regularly experiences sub-freezing temperatures, so additional cold weather protections were added to ensure stable performance across all vehicle systems. Just hours later, at 10.41 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, China launched again. A Long March 4B roared off the pad from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center in the Gobi Desert, carrying the classified Yaogan 47 satellite into orbit. Despite strong winds and severe cold, the mission proceeded exactly as planned. While China does not release detailed information about Yaogan spacecraft, they are widely believed to support military intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance operations. The record-setting streak concluded on Tuesday at 10.08 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, when a Long March 3B launched the secretive TJSW-22 payload from the Xichang Satellite Launch Center in western China. All three launches occurred on the same calendar day in Beijing, a milestone confirmed by the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, or CASC. According to CASC, this marked the first time China has successfully conducted three Long March launches in a single day. TJSW-22, officially designated Communication Technology Experimental Satellite-22, was developed by Kasky's 8th Academy. The satellite is designed for communications, broadcasting, data relay, and on-orbit technology testing. The Long March 3B rocket that carried it to orbit was built by CASC's First Academy and belongs to the highly reliable Long March 3A family, often referred to as China's gold medal rocket series. This rocket family also holds a unique distinction. It was China's first domestically developed launch system capable of being tested and launched in parallel from two separate launch pads. Earlier this year, China completed a new generation of ground telemetry, tracking, and command systems at both pads, significantly reducing turnaround time and increasing launch efficiency. With the completion of the TJSW-22 mission, the Long March rocket family reached its 615th launch overall. These missions also contributed to a remarkable global statistic. Five orbital launches within a 24-hour period. Alongside China's three launches, SpaceX flew two Falcon 9 missions, one deploying additional Starlink satellites on Monday evening, and another launching the NROL-77 mission for the U.S. National Reconnaissance Office on Tuesday afternoon. The message here is unmistakable. China is not slowing down. It is deliberately pushing the limits of launch frequency. For comparison, the previous fastest multi-launch sequence occurred in March 2024, when SpaceX launched three Falcon rockets in 20 hours and three minutes. SpaceX still leads the world in annual launch totals, having already surpassed last year's record of 134 launches and now targeting an ambitious 178 launches by the end of the year. But China's gap is narrowing and it is narrowing quickly. This new launch cadence record arrives as China aggressively expands its orbital infrastructure. One of the recent missions added more Guowang Internet satellites to low Earth orbit, while the other two deployed classified military payloads. Together, 
they reflect a dual-use strategy that blends commercial communications and national security. There are now more than 100 operational Guowang satellites in orbit. China SatNet, the state-owned operator, plans to expand that number to approximately 13,000 satellites in the coming years. If completed, Guowang would stand shoulder to shoulder with SpaceX's Starlink network, which currently operates nearly 9,000 satellites. Beyond launch statistics, China is also strengthening its human presence in space. After being excluded from the International Space Station due to U.S. national security restrictions, China built its own orbital outpost. The Tiangong Space Station has been continuously crewed since 2021, and three astronauts are currently living and working aboard the station. Last month, China launched an uncrewed spacecraft to Tiangong as part of a contingency plan after the Shenzhou 20 return capsule was found to have a damaged window, likely caused by orbital debris. Soon after, two Shenzhou 21 astronauts conducted the mission's first spacewalk to inspect the damage from outside the station. On December 9th, astronauts Jing Haipeng and Zhu Yangju exited Tiangong through the Wentian module's airlock, wearing next-generation Fitian spacesuits delivered earlier by the Tianzhou 9 cargo spacecraft. Jing wore the red suit and Zhu wore the blue, matching their training configuration. The spacewalk lasted just over eight hours, ending at 6.45 p.m. China Standard Time, or 10.45 UTC. For Jing, it was his fifth spacewalk. For Zhu, it was his first, making him China's youngest spacewalker at just 32 years old. During the EVA, the astronauts installed new debris protection hardware, inspected the Tianhe, Wentian, and Mengtian modules, replaced a thermal cover with a new temperature control adapter, and examined their docked Shenzhou 22 spacecraft. The most critical task, however, was a direct external inspection of Shenzhou 20's damaged window. Because the return capsule has no handrails or anchor points, Jing used Tiangong's robotic arm to safely reach the area, the only viable method to perform the inspection. Until this spacewalk, the damage had only been observed from inside the capsule and through robotic cameras. With new imagery and first-hand observations now available, engineers are evaluating the safest path forward. According to Ji Qiming of the China Manned Space Engineering Office, protective hardware for the damaged window was delivered aboard Shenzhou 22, along with the tools required for installation. Once repairs are complete, Shenzhou 20 is expected to return to Earth, though the landing site has not yet been finalized. The Shenzhou 21 crew will remain aboard Tiangong for approximately five more months, using Shenzhou 22 as their return vehicle. During their stay, they will conduct experiments across life sciences, biotechnology, microgravity fluid physics, materials research, combustion studies, and emerging space technologies. Tianzhu 10 is also scheduled to visit the station in 2026 while the crew remains on board. China's rapid momentum in space is now influencing political discussions in the United States. Recently, a bipartisan group of senators proposed creating a National Institute for Space Research, arguing that the U.S. must prepare for a post-ISS future as China increases activity around Tiangong. Once the International Space Station retires around 2030, American research is expected to shift toward private space stations currently under development. Supporters of the proposal argued that the Institute would help coordinate this transition and prevent the U.S. from falling behind. To move forward, Congress would need to pass the Space Race Research and Continuing Exploration Act. Backers of the bill, including former NASA astronaut Senator Mark Kelly, warned that without decisive action, China's Tiangong could become the primary destination for international orbital research. These concerns have been raised repeatedly over the past decade. If the ISS retires before new U.S. stations are operational, research funding and global partnerships could drift toward China. Kelly, who flew to the ISS four times during the space shuttle era, has argued that orbital research fuels innovation on Earth and underpins long-term national competitiveness. Senator John Cornyn echoed this warning, describing the next phase of human spaceflight as a new kind of space race one in which the United States needs every possible advantage. Complicating the situation is the Wolf Amendment, passed in 2011, which restricts cooperation between NASA and China unless Congress grants special approval. 
While policy debates continue in Washington, China is pressing forward. It has launched robotic missions to the Moon and Mars, built and operated its own space station, and is planning crewed lunar landings by 2030. NASA has similar ambitions, but may soon face significant budget pressure. A White House proposal could reduce NASA's budget by as much as 24% in 2026, with science funding taking the largest hit. Supporters argue that funding should be redirected toward crewed missions to the Moon and Mars. Critics warn that cutting science investment could weaken U.S. leadership just as global competition intensifies. The proposed Space Race Act aims to counter that risk by establishing a national research institute to guide U.S. science in low Earth orbit after the ISS retires. In the early decades of spaceflight, exploration beyond Earth was dominated by two superpowers. Today, the landscape is far more crowded. Governments and private companies across the world are investing heavily in space. The United States, China, Japan, Russia, and France remain the largest spenders, with the European Union close behind. New players, including Saudi Arabia, are entering the arena with ambitious national space programs and billion-dollar budgets. Even in this increasingly competitive environment, China stands out. For Beijing, space is not just about exploration. It is a strategic instrument for national power, scientific advancement, industrial growth, and long-term economic influence. In 2021, just months after NASA landed the Perseverance rover on Mars, China successfully landed its own rover, Zhurong. That achievement demonstrated China's ability to execute highly complex missions by combining advanced robotics, sensors, artificial intelligence, and precision manufacturing. A key driver behind China's momentum is its vast technical talent pool. More than 40% of Chinese university graduates earn degrees in science, technology, engineering, or mathematics, a higher proportion than in the United States, Europe, or Japan. China is also home to roughly half of the world's top 20 science cities. According to the Dongbi Index, China now surpasses the United States in the number of high-level science and technology professionals. That talent is reinforced by manufacturing dominance. China controls much of the global supply chain for rare earth materials, essential for batteries, magnets, sensors, satellites, and advanced defense systems. Combined with long-term state planning, massive investment, control of key supply chains, and close integration between civilian and military space programs, China has built a full-spectrum strategy designed to secure a leading position in the next era of space exploration.